you want me to go ahead and get okay. started? Welcome everybody. Uh, once again, this is uh, Work Better with uh, Low Vision Tools Information Fair Round 3A. And our opening code is STRONGER, S-T-R-O-N-G-E-R, -E STRONGER. And just as a reminder, uh, how they're doing the information fair sessions, uh, at the very end, or, the, or session round 3C, you will get the closing code. So whatever session you're in for round 3A, you get the opening code. And then you can go to a different session or whatever session you want to. And uh, you will be in the um, in the session 3C, you will be in um, the very last one, and you'll get the closing code for that one. All right, over to you, Justine. All right, I don't know if my slides are up. I am, um, I am here, hold on. Uh, I've just arrived and I will now put your slides on the screen. Thank, thank you. Uh, just give me a confirmation that that's up there. Somebody. Um, yes, I believe it is. Groovy. Okay, now I got it. Um, okay, so I'm here to talk a bit about our um, low vision products that we offer. There's a lot of low vision products that we have. I've just listed a few here um, to highlight the ones that I think would help students while they're learning at home. Um, so I can go over um, some of these products. And if you have any questions about them, you can just put your questions in the chat and um, we'll answer them as we go along here. So um, we have um, we have some eyewear filters called UltraLens and Topaz filters. And these are basically just um, yellow and amber in color. And we have these in a variety of sizes. We have four different sizes for children and adults. And these are, um, you know, fairly in inexpensive and they really do help reduce glare and they enhance contrast and um, they kind of help um, as we are all looking at screens all day and we're doing more virtual learning um, and distance learning and a lot of the instruction is all done through virtual training and we're looking at the screens a lot more then we've always looked at screens a lot, but now it's even more as we're all, you know, working and instructing students and clients from home for the past seven months. So um, these, these two um, eyewear filters are great tools uh, for children or adults to wear while they're looking at the computers um, to block out blue light and help reduce the eye strain. Um, we have the Explore Bright Ray, and this is a head worn, it's a head uh, light that you can wear. Um, and this is helpful. This is a great tool if you're um, trying to look in a dark closet or look in a cabinet to find, um, to find you know a Tupperware lid that's always hiding in the back of the the cabinet um, so this is just a great tool to use to help with illumination and get more lighting it's an LED uh, light source and it has three different levels of brightness and like I said it's hands-free um, individuals that have uh, you know vision impairment in low lighting environments this is a is really helpful um, and they can wear it around the house um, like I said to 
or outside in the, you know, on a walk in the evening. Um, we have the LEDs booklet, and this is a great book that explains how to uh, pick the right lighting for your home. So if you're trying to adjust the lights and get, you know, better uh, lighting, um, you know, if, if you need brighter lighting or if bright lights hurt your eyes, there's different, um, there's different illuminations of LEDs and this booklet helps explain how to best um, illuminate your environment. Um, the Brightline reading guide is, again, it's a, it's like a acetate sheet and it's a filter and we have um, yellow and pink and this can just lay, it's just one line at a time so you can go sentence by sentence and you lay it flat on the reading material and uh, again it just you know really reduces that glare and it's um you know it's very inexpensive and it's a great way to to um and fun way to get students reading some books um they're beginning to read and want to reduce that glare we have the envision kit and this is a kit that has a variety of magnifiers and binoculars. There's a different array of magnification levels for distance and near magnification. Um, and then we have our family of electronic magnifiers. We have the Jupiter, which is an electronic um, kind of desktop CCTV that's foldable. Um, we have the Video Mag HD, and this is a handheld video magnifier. And we have the Mac Connect, which is a tablet magnifier. And these are all, you know, great devices that students can use at home while they're doing their instruction from home. Um, and so these are just uh, some of the low vision devices that we have. Does anyone have any questions about these products? This is, hey Justine, this is Fred. I um, apologize. I'm um, woefully inept at this. So I uh, have put the links to all the products you just mentioned into the chat. Oh, um, thank you. Good for me there, except that I've uh, totally lost your PowerPoint. So it's not been on the screen um, and I'm working oh. to restore that. So um, okay. keep going and I will get to the appropriate slide in just a minute. Okay. Right. So I'm going to move on to um, recently released products. So we just had a product come out, I think in June, this was released and it's called Going to the Playground. And it is a free iOS app and it comes with a QR code on the packaging that helps direct the user to the correct app. And it comes with five tactile and braille overlays. And it comes with a frame for stability and to hold those overlays in place on the iPad. And um, it has a one page insert and print in Braille that gives you the instructions on how to best use the app with the overlays. Uh, the product is for a 9.7 inch iPad only. So um, these materials were will only work on a 9.7 inch iPad. Um, and the overlays are $29 and the app is free from the Apple Store. And this is a great uh, tool for students to have sort of a virtual playground. Um, I know right now um, a lot of the playground equipment is not accessible to children right now. Swings have been removed, um, you know, playground equipment's been blocked off or removed. So um, this is a great way to kind of introduce um, a playground setting and environment to children and just get them, you know, excited and, you know, playing on the iPad and 
Um, it has a merry-go-round and it has monkey bars and um, a sandbox so they can, and it's a self-voicing app, so they can go through each um, page of the book and it, each page has an overlay and it's just really introductory to, you know, um, braille literacy, um, you know, as they learn, you know, where is the heading, where is the page number, um, and uh, they can just kind of move through a playground and get to experience that right now if, you know, they don't have access to going to a playground in person right now. So um, that's going to the playground. Does anyone have any questions about it? Okay, and so now we have a slide um, that says coming soon. So we have a product that's coming out soon called the Juno, and this is going to add to our um, product line of video magnifiers. Uh, so this will be a handheld video magnifier with OCR and touch. Um, it will be a seven inch matte LCD screen and it, it's a touch screen, but it also has some button, you know, functionality. Um, it will have spoken menus. And like I said, it will have optical character recognition so you can capture text and have it read aloud. Uh, it will have four gigabytes of storage, so you can store approximately 600 images on that device. And you'll be able to transfer uh, files using a USB-C flash drive. Um, you'll be able to name your files with voice tags. And the magnification range is 2x to 30x. And it has 24 different high contrast color modes. And it will have the adjustable line and mask feature. And it will have an HD camera that rotates to support five different reading modes. So you'll have um, distance and um, near. Um, you'll have hobby and uh, writing view and also a self view. So we are really excited um, about the Juno and hopefully it will be coming out um, soon, probably, you know, sometime this winter, uh, we should be seeing that coming out. So does anyone have any questions about our, you know, new product coming out or um, going to the playground that was recently released. Um, Justin, we, Justine, we have a question from Lana. How does the uh, Jupiter differ from the Visio book? The, the Jupiter um, differ from the Visio book. Well, we don't have the Visio book anymore. Um, the Jupiter it has a um, it has a really great camera. Uh, it has a very high quality camera, and it has I think it has like thirty three or thirty five different um, color combinations. Uh, it has a lot of different um, color modes. It does have a built in menu, so you can um, kind of customize the settings. Um, it's, so the main it's difference really, is that it's available and the uh, Visio book is not. Well, this is Sorry. correct. That actually, the Visio book is available for sale um, from a separate company, but it's not a quota product. Right. Yeah. Another question is, will Juno That's be great. available with quota? Will yes. the, the Juno? Yes. Hey, hey, Justine. Hi. Hi, it's you? Dorinda. Um, yeah. I, I was wondering, what's the price point going to be for the Juno? 
Well, we haven't quite um, figured that out yet. We, I don't want to say a price and then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I like the size and I like that it's touch and button. Um, mm -hmm. that, that, I think that's going to be a really nice tool. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the question is, does Juno do distance? And if so, how far? Um, yes, Juno will um, be able to, uh, to have that rotation of the camera to do distance and it's around 15 to 16 feet. You'll be able to get a distance view with that. So if you're trying to read, you know, some price tags at the store on a high shelf or um, read, you know, a flyer or a poster or something in the hallway um, or just you know, you're not gonna be able to sit from the back of the classroom and be able to see the board, you know. So you'll have to kind of get a little bit closer. Are there any other questions coming through? Okay. Let me go back to the, uh, the opening list that you posted. And um, as I say, links are on there uh, on the chat. Sometimes the links will take you to a uh, search results page because some of these um, products have more than one item associated with them. So the uh, you may have to dig around in them a little bit to find the one you want. Okay. I think this was supposed to be more of a, like a discussion. I don't know. Can we put it in gallery view or something? <laughs> I feel like this is more of a, yeah. you know, discussion or any questions oh. okay we're off the screen sharing now justine this, this is Dorinda again so i feel like last year you were talking about um envision and whether that was going to be redone or um can you tell us the status of that what's what's happening with the envision kit yeah, um, so we are in the process of uh, revising that kit. Um, we're redoing the, the guidebooks and updating those. Um, we're going to be uh, replacing some of the magnifiers and binoculars with newer styles. Um, we did a bunch of focus groups, um, gathered a lot of data, I took those devices on the road and <laughs> went around uh -huh. a lot of um, transition um, camps and um, different, you know, environments working with students and adults um, to get feedback on, you know, what is really needed. Um, so we're really trying to get um, more available to all age levels. Um, currently the kit was mainly for young children and I wanted that to be a broader audience and you know the the vision rehab services could also benefit from using that um, as well as children. So we're, we're um, kind of combining the kits and um, really trying to make them more streamlined and you know, easier um, for trans, you know, to transport um, from place to place. Um, so, yeah, I hope, you know, that's, that's a work in progress. <laughs> right. Thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. Benjamin comments that Juno is pretty awesome. Yes, I'm very excited for Juno. Hi, my name is Lana Mason, and I just wanted to commend you on the, 
on the variety of um, assistive tech products that you are developing for people with low vision. I know in my state, um, a lot of the teachers were feeling like the Mac Connect was uh, too advanced for the young kids. So I'm glad to see that um, you brought in something, you know, similar to, to the Visio book. And like other people have mentioned, I'm super excited um, for the Juno to come out. Thank you. And Lana is kind of a tough sell, so if you've got her one over, <laughs> you're probably in pretty good shape. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone have any more feedback or questions or comments about if, you know, are you using these things? <laughs> um, you know, what, what would you need are there any, um, any, you know, really great needs out there for things that we could be working on? This is Lana again, and I just have um, another thought. Um, I used to, to work at APH a few years ago, so I understand um, more than the average person, you know, some of the pricing factors that, that are involved. But um, I'm saying this as an individual with low vision who often struggles to find uh, devices that fit my needs in the working world. And some of these new devices that you're coming out with um, are also personally of interest to me. And so I really encourage you guys um, when you think about pricing to, to try to keep adult consumers in mind as, as well, you know, and the lower you can keep those prices down, then perhaps it enables us to, you know, actually make some of those purchases, um, you know, using our own monies. Yes, that is definitely something we are working on, reaching that adult audience more. Uh, Wendy comments that Jupiter has been great for my students. Looking forward to seeing the Juno when it comes out. Would anyone like us to show any of the products on our website? Is there something you're struggling to find? We can show you how to get to it. Five minutes left. Thanks, Mark. All right, does anyone have any more questions? <laughs> Can you talk about the Playground app just a little bit more? I missed a little bit of your presentation. I wasn't exactly sure what the overlays did. Sure. Um, let's see if I can show you on the screen. Um, so the the overlays are just um, clear. So this is like the the one page insert um, that I use. It. It's a free app from the Apple Store. And the overlays are clear and it comes with a frame. Um, 
So they're clear with um, tactile and braille, and they just go over the iPad screen. And the frame holds it in place. So it looks kind of like this. If I can, oops, I can get it open here. Well, oh, I've got a bunch of the frames. There's already a frame on here. Trying to get the app open. Can't see. Um, so basically, it's just it's a free app. And it comes with um, five clear overlays that place over on top of the app. Oh, I have to re-download the app. I'm sorry. I will do that in the next group. Um, so I can't show you with the app open right now. I have to re-download it. Um, but it's it just goes on to the iPad like so. And the frame that you all will get is a bright yellow color. I requested that it be a bright yellow color and not white. As you can see, it's hard to put a white uh, frame onto a white iPad. So it will look something like that but it'll be a bright yellow frame with a clear overlay on top of the going to the playground app. Don't know how much, if, how much of that you can see, but. Lana <laughs> asks, Lana wonders if we've thought about doing overlays for different size iPads, which of course means trying to anticipate what um, not at this do. time. What, so, sorry, oh. as, the, as the iPad sizes change to make the overlays change with the size of yeah, the... Yeah, that's, that's the gist of the question, yeah. Yeah, um, like I said, not at this time because this um, size iPad is still used a lot in the educational system um, as of right now, so I... Um, question is, does the frame attach? It does. Um, it has these um, suction um, things on the back and they can, they will suction down on the actual um, iPad. So it, it sticks on there pretty well. I was trying to get it off earlier. <laughs> so it will, it will stay in place. And if those, if it starts to become loose, um, and this is all in the instructions as well, you can clean these um, little adhesive uh, tabs on the back of the frame, and you can just wash those with like a little bit of water, uh, you know, on a washcloth and just wipe them down, and then they'll become sticky again, and they just stick right on I think right the book is coming them. out. Okay, well, thank you everybody for attending. Uh, this closes out this session. Uh, the next one will be session 3B. Uh, again, as a reminder, you'll get a closing code at the very end of session 3C, Information Fair Session 3C. So uh, thanks for joining us and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Getting some thank yous for lots of good information from the in the comments thank you let me see if i can not mess up this time <laughs> <laughs> well i um, can't get my app to open it's like it's expired so
So I think I had the the developer app. We'll give give it another minute to let people come in. I know they're it's kind of kind of hard to get from one session to the next in one minute. So Mark, um, yes. <laughs> uh, when I'm running the slides and sharing the screen, I can't seem to find chat. Um, okay, I'll there, take care of the I'll take care of the chat while you're doing the sharing. I mean, there's got to be a way to do it. I just can't figure it out. Let's see. Um, Justine, do you want me to go ahead and put the slides up now? If you, um, if, yes, please. Um, if you hit escape, Fred, it should, it should um, take you out where you can have that minimized. And then if you click on the chat um, bubble, it'll, it should open that chat window on the side. And the screen that's being shared is only the one that I authorized, not the Zoom screen or the chat or anything else. It's just the, yeah. Okay. You got to click share screen so that you, yeah. you can pick what you want to share, so. Okay. I want to make sure I'm not showing everything, but just the, just the PowerPoint. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to APH Annual Meeting. You are in information uh, FAIR Round 3B, Work Better with Low Vision Tools, presented by Justine Taylor. Uh, and if you missed the opening code for the first session, it was stronger. And you'll get a closing code at the end of the next session, which is Round 3C. So welcome. We're glad you're here. Over to you, Justine. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, to talk about working better with low vision tools. Um, I have a, a variety of low vision products that I will be going over. Um, we have a lot of low vision products. These are just a few that I have highlighted um, to talk about today to kind of um, go over these products I, th I think these are some great ones that could be used for students or, you know, clients as um, they're doing distance learning and you're doing a lot of your instruction with uh, students and clients from home right now. So these are some of our great low vision products and I will kind of uh, explain each one and I think in the chat we have links to each of these products so you can go to their product page um, if you would like us to show you on our website any of these uh, just let us know in the chat and if you have any questions specifically about each uh, one of these just let us know and I can give you some more details. Um, I'll start off here a little bit about the ultra lens and the Topaz filters. These are our eyewear uh, filter products and the ultra lens is yellow and our Topaz filter is an amber color. So these are glasses you can wear um, as we're all looking at screens a lot right now. Um, if your students or clients are experiencing headaches or eye strain or eye fatigue, um, these filters are a great uh, tool to use to block out that blue light and reduce the glare. Um, so these are uh, relatively inexpensive and we have four different sizes um, for children, um, young, young as infant, toddler to adults uh, sizes. Um, we have the Explorer Bright Ray. So this is a head-borne device. It's a 
headlights. We have, I'm in Kentucky, so we have a lot of caves and I always think of, you know, the, an explorer in the cave with their head lamp on. So um, this is a, a light and it's an LED light source and it has three different uh, brightness levels. So you can um, have it, use it hands-free and you can use it to look at um, if you're trying to find something in a dark closet or um, you know, you're walking down a dark hallway or looking for um, you know, some, something in the, in the cupboard uh, that's in the back of the cabinet that's hard to see. Um, you can use this, this light to help illuminate your environment. Um, we have the LEDs uh, booklet, and this is a great um, kind of guide to how to pick the best lighting for your home. So if you're trying to find uh, a you know, brighter LED light or if, um, the bright of the light is too much, you can read our guide and it explains how to find the best LED and how to um, pick the right illumination um, for your environment. We have the Bright Line Reading Guide and this is um, similar to the eyewear filters, but this is a filter um, you can place on reading material and it comes in, I think it just comes in yellow and pink and it's just one line at a time. So you can move that filter to see each line and it really helps um, reduce the glare and make those letters stand out better. Um, we have the Envision Kit. And this is a kit that we have that offers a variety of magnifiers and binoculars. Um, so for distance and near magnification devices. And we have uh, you know, several different um, magnification levels in that kit. Um, and then we have our electronic magnifiers. Uh, we have the Jupiter, um, and this is kind of a desktop version of an electronic uh, CCTV, and it's foldable, so it's very portable. Um, we have the Video Mag HD, which is um, our handheld video magnifier, and we have the Mac Connect, which is our tablet magnifier. And these are really great devices to use right now um, for students that are learning from home. Um, does anyone have any specific questions about any of these devices? Does anyone want to see, see one of these on the website? Okay, I will move on to our recently released product called Going to the Playground. Hey, uh, Justine. Yes. Um, Francis Mary would like to see them. Okay. Um, Siri here. Let me know if I can help. Oh. Um, would you like to see all of them or? Sure, if I can share my screen here. Let's see. I've got, I'm, well, if I share my screen, let's see. Should I stop sharing my screen and 
You know what? I don't think I can. Yeah, if you could, Fred, I'm not. All right, let me see. I don't know if I have the permission. Okay. I need to be a co host. Now, um, if I. If I click on the link over in the chat, will that, uh, I don't know that I, that would be sharing, uh, but uh, I could give it a go. But I have to pick okay. one. Is there a particular one I should uh, click on? I think they just want to see, oh, it is letting me share now. Um. Okay, can you all see my screen? We can. Okay, I did have, oof, I have to turn this to a different contrast. So I did bring up the website. Um, so this, uh, well, <laughs> can you, Uh, this is the Video Mag HD, and this is four ninety nine, and it is a very durable magnifier that children can use. Um, it's what is it like a four point three inch screen, and it has two X to 13x magnification. If we have FM's account number, we can just go ahead and put it in her cart, one of each of these things. Yeah. <laughs> while we're <Yeah>. here. <laughs> we can load you up, definitely. <laughs> um, so that's our video mag. Let's show you the, we'll show you the ultra. See if we can. Find the ultra lens. Here's the ultra lens junior. We've got the ultra lens adults. And that is $11 for, well, I don't know. Can you all see the color or not? There's a blue and a yellow. Okay, there you go. Um, so that is what our ultra lens looks like. And that is the adult size. So we have the infant size, the junior uh, size, the clip on and the adults. I see that um, Amy raised her hand. If, uh, if you want to unmute your mic and if, if it relates to this, um, this demonstration, go ahead and unmute and ask your question if you want. Here's the topaz. So it's it looks the same as looks the same as our ultra lens style, but it is an amber color. So um, the amber is nice for indoor or outdoor use. The yellow ultra lens is typically um, best for indoor use. Um, I know a lot of people with photophobia don't really like to use the yellow ones outside because it makes it makes everything very bright and it enhances the, the light. So if you're, you know, inside the yellow ultra lens are, are very helpful. Um, the topaz, the amber color is a is a very um, popular color. So um, Again, this comes in four different sizes as well. It the infant, junior, clip-on, and the adult size. And this one is the adult. Question uh, is, do, does the ultra lens fit over glasses? It does. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, and which color sunglasses filters would work the best for glare and high contrast? Which colors? Yeah. 
well, all of, of filters, yeah. Um, so normally there's a, sort of an assessment that would be done um, and to find out the preference of the user. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of different eye, eye conditions and uh, if the individual is photophobic or has albinism, they're gonna have a specific preference. So there's not just one color we can say, okay, this color is um, great for, um, you know, macular degeneration. We can um, give sort of a general idea. I know um, RNIB has a great resource that does kind of break it down more by color and um, they offer, um, like typically the colors are yellow, amber, orange, gray, or plum. And sometimes um, they'll evaluate green or red. And those are typically the colors that you would give to the client or student to test. Um, we also, uh, there's a great resource. Um, there's a free uh, eye uh, test filter kit. And that is also very helpful to help identify which color is best for the, the student or client. I can try and find those resources and put them in the chat. Um, while I do that, let, uh, what else? Oops. Oh dear. Um, I think I was showing you each of the products. Fred, am I still sharing my screen? Yes. Um, let's see. You did ultra lens. Did you do bright ray uh, or, or you did the bright line? Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I might be looking for the Envision kit. Um, um, did you figure out how to share your screen so you could keep showing them this while I find some resources? Keep showing them. Each of the products. Um, let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, Envision. I'll click on that. Oh, yeah. Here's the. Oh. oh my gosh. That's not going to work. Sorry. This is the part where Justine and I both talk to ourselves and you all get to <laughs> listen to our internal monologues. And if they come together, it'll be beautiful. And if not, it'll just be nonsense. <laughs> okay, I'm going to... Are you sharing now? I do not know. Um, you would have Are to we ask. Sharing? You're, you're not sharing, Fred. Okay. Back to Zoom. Back to share. Back to this. Okay. You all should be seeing the Jupiter uh, page now. Yep. Okay. Um, now available on quota, it says. It gives you the remarkably low price of $3,200. And um, we can look at some different um, shots of it. You're seeing the control panel there, which uh, is possibly different. Okay. Looks like there's a, well, I'm, I'm not going to attempt to, to describe it, but you can see that uh, below the screen there are some control buttons. Um, 
contrast, I would assume, taking a picture of the screen, uh, kind of a central control. Okay. This is a desktop uh, use where it's being used to magnify a book uh, placed under it. So using it as a CCTV, um, can use it as a distance camera, and it folds flat. Okay. And, okay, so, um, Camera modes include reading mode, distance view, and self-view for um, applying makeup. Well, if only I had known. Let us go to um, a different. Okay, now how do we get, <laughs> you all are very nice to indulge our, my, uh, help me out here, Mark, I may got to get back to uh, the chat where those links were. Okay, so you can stop, do you want to stop sharing your screen? Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. We looked at the video mag. Um, in vision, the search results, um, you kind of have to know what you're looking for with the Envision kit um, because um, it, uh, there are several kits there and, and manuals and so on but we can look at the uh, link, follow the link to the Explorer Bright Ray and see what happens here. Okay. And again, this is your little headlamp. Explorer Bright Ray, $79. And it is, um, for nighttime travel, for eating up text and various uses around the home. Um, having used something like this in my backyard, you will also alert the neighbors to possible criminal activity in your house. So it's a good way to kind of bond with the neighbors. Um, okay. I did, um, I did place that link in the chat um, for that, that uh, resource that kind of um, explains how you can get this uh, kit and use it to identify um, some filters that would help and determine which color would be best. Um, I do want to move on and so I have enough time to tell you about our recently released product and our product coming soon. And then we can come back to showing you some of these other, um, some of our other low vision products at the end if we have time. So you have five um, minutes, Justine. Okay, so I will quickly tell you about. Um, is, this screen, is this screen up, up for view? Um, Nothing is shared yet. All right. Keep talking, I'll get there. Okay, so going to the playground is a free um, iOS app. It's, um, it's an, an app um, for the iPad only. So uh, these materials only work with the 9.7 inch iPad. They come with five um, tactile and braille overlays and they come with a frame to hold the overlays in place. Um, it comes with a one page insert uh, that will explain how to best use um, this product with the, the overlays with the app. Um, it is $29 for the overlays and the app is free from the Apple store. Um, and then our 
coming soon product is called the Juno. And the Juno is going to be um, an addition to our video magnifier um, product line. So it will be a handheld video magnifier with OCR and speech um, and a touch screen. So it will be a seven inch matte LCD screen. Um, it will have spoken menus and it will also have optical character recognition. So you can take a picture and have the text read aloud. Um, you'll be able to store up to about 600 images on the device and you'll be able to transfer files using a USB-C um, flash drive and you'll be able to name your files using a voice tag. Uh, the magnification level will be 2x to 30x. It will have 24 high contrast color modes and adjustable line and masks and it will have an adjustable camera that rotates to support five different um, camera positions. So you'll be able to have near um, reading, distance view, hobby view, um, handwriting, and self view. So I'm very excited about Juno coming out. Um, does anyone have any questions quickly about that? Okay, if not, um, we can go back to our list of products and keep showing you um, the Brightline. Did we show the Brightline reading guide? Um, Brightline reading guide. Do you want me to, have to do that one? Yes. We got a little, a little more than a minute left. Okay. I think if we can just show this one last thing and have the next. Uh, okay. One. Mm -hmm. Wrong one. I'm going to let you down here, um, because. Wrong thing. Right line. Oh, that's okay. The all the links are in the chat, so they, they are. I want to click on it. Okay, I think I just ran out of time. Um, okay. The uh, a couple of questions in the comments. Um, is the uh, Juno a product in collaboration with Freedom Sci, like the video mag? Yes. Yes. Um, Juno looks like it would be helpful for school age. Could you please repeat the name of the free overlay app? Going to the playground. Free app, but the overlays do come at a cost. Yes. $29, I believe. Yes, it was $29 for the, the overlays uh, with the frame. It's a, a pack of uh, materials in the kit with five overlay, five tactile and braille overlays with a frame that will, you can use in conjunction with the app. Okay, so I, I think that uh, we have some other people for the last session coming in. So thank okay. you all for attending thank you. round 3B. All right. Okay. Uh, tell me again, is it possible for me to share the PowerPoint and still have the Zoom and chat? I can get the Zoom faces, but I can't seem to get the chat. When you, Fred, when you share your screen, you can only do one or the other. When I'm sharing the PowerPoint. I can see the, um, uh, I could see you talking. I can see the little gallery view in one corner. 
but I can't, it doesn't give me an option to open the chat, so. So I, I can take care of the chat while you do that. I appreciate it, because I, I will screw things up. We have um, Julia from KSB says hello and send Dove my love, of course. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there's some thank yous and some good presentation comments also. Okay, I think, are people still rolling in, Mark? Yep, we'll give them maybe just another few seconds here. Okay. Um, let me paste those links in right now so I don't have to. Okay. Um, Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is annual meeting information fair round 3C, the last information fair session here. And the title of this session is Work Better with Low Vision Tools. And I'll be providing the closing code um, right before it ends. And I'll put that in the chat and I'll uh, uh, say it as well. So if you feel free, if you have any questions to throw them in the chat, or if you want to talk, uh, just unmute your mic and we're glad you're here. Over to you, Justine. Thank you. Thank you for joining uh, my session here at the last info fair uh, round here. So um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of our low vision products. Um, we have many low vision products, but I've just listed a few here um, to kind of highlight some of the ones that I think are um, would be helpful for your students or clients uh, when you're instructing um, from home and doing all of our virtual training and instruction virtually right now. Can I confirm that this is on, that you all can see this? Sorry, is the PowerPoint up? That's, yeah, I wanna confirm that. It, you're not sharing. No. Okay. I think we are going to get the slides up for you guys. We are. Share screen. So I'm going to start with talking about our eyewear filters. So we have the Ultra Lens, which is our yellow color um, glasses, and we have the Topaz filters, and these are the amber color glasses that we offer. And these are really great um, tools to, to use with students or adults um, to reduce glare. And as we're all looking at screens um, practically all day now, uh, we're doing a lot of um, online learning. So if your students or clients are experiencing any eye strain or eye fatigue or headaches from looking at the screen all day. These are um, a really great device that you can uh, wear over glasses. Um, they're fit overs. We have four different sizes in each of these filters. Um, we have the infant toddler size, the junior, the clip-on, and the adult size. Um, and like I said, we have the yellow and amber color that help uh, really reduce the blue light and the glare um, from screens. And so uh, those are really great tools to use right now. Um, the Explorer Bright Ray, this is a headborne device. It's a headlamp um, that you can use with an LED light source and it has three brightness levels. And uh, this is a great device to use in the home to look into a dark closet um, to find, you know, a game or find something in the closet. Um, you can use it to look into a dark cabinet to find that um, Tupperware lid that's always seems to be lost in the back of the cabinet. Um, or you can use it to 
any in any low light environment it's it's a really great um, tool to use uh, we have the LEDs booklet and this is a great guide that explains how to adjust all the lighting in your home so if you're trying to um, get more you know lighting uh, to get brighter lighting or if there's um, blue light um, and a lot of the LEDs have different um, cool and white and a lot of different colors of that um, lighting spectrum with the LED lights. So this guide really helps explain how to best get the, the best lighting for your environment. Um, and we've got the bright line reading guide. And this is similar to the, the glasses, um, the eyewear filters, but it's an acetate sheet and we have yellow and pink um, for those colors for that device. It's um, just one line at a time, so you can put it flat on the reading material and go through the, the book or, you know, it, it really makes the text stand out um, when you put the filter over the letters. Um, we have the Envision Kit, and this is a great kit with a wide variety of magnifiers and monoculars. Um, it, it has different magnification levels for distance and near magnification devices. So um, it has, it's the optical aids um, that you can use to instruct your student on how to use a monocular to take notes from the whiteboard or use a magnifier to, to read their book or um, look at a price tag or something. Uh, and then we have our electronic uh, magnifiers. So we have the Jupiter, which is our desktop version um, of a CCTV. It is foldable, so it's very portable. Uh, we have the Video Mag HD, which is our handheld video magnifier. And we have the Mac Connect, which is our tablet magnifier. Um, so this, and those are all uh, really great uh, magnifiers to use with your students at home. Does anyone have any questions about any of these devices? Okay, if not, Christine, uh, this is Leslie Durst. I, um, I had looked for the Envision on the website. I had a teacher call me about that and I knew it was available, but I wasn't able to find it. I can find the consumable parts. Is, has that listing been removed for some reason? Um, are you, or maybe you can tell me why I'm, I'm, we're not able to find it on the um, website. I'm not sure why you're not able to find it, it may, um, it may be on back order or okay. well, many yeah, normally that still pops, but you know, I had found it previously. And then um, when I had the call from the teacher, I went on and tried to find it. And I, like I said, I could find all of the different consumable parts, um, but I couldn't seem to find the kits. So I didn't know if maybe something had changed and I wasn't able to. Well, I can tell you, we are working on revising that kit. Oh, okay, so maybe that's been pulled temporarily, possibly? Possibly, yeah. Like well, a I can call customer service. I just thought maybe you would know. Okay. A couple yeah. of questions. It, um, this says the renamed, they have renamed Envision to Toad, but, um, is Envision the same as Toad? No. No, those are different things. Um, so yeah, I think you might still, we still ought to check with customer service on, on the status of the Envision kit. Another comment, how much is the Mac Connect? 
the Mac Connect is, I think it's 3000 and it is available on quota. Um, Jim Olson says regarding the Envision, particularly the magnifiers, it is important for teachers to realize that we as TVIs are not allowed to prescribe low vision devices. We can dispense a device prescribed by a low vision doctor. We can instruct a student on the use of the device, but as you revise the kit or kits, please consider using a disclaimer that reminds users of this. Yes, we are addressing that for sure. Um, there are certain states that cannot um, purchase this kit because of that um, exact reason. Um, so when we uh, put the, the revised kit out, it will be available um, where you can buy, if your state allows um, you to purchase the kit in its entirety with the optical aids and materials, we will have that as the catalog number, but we'll also have a separate catalog number where you can just purchase the, the reading materials. So, um, if your state doesn't allow you to purchase the kit because it has optical aids in it and you just, um, you know, go to your low vision exam and um, have your uh, our CVRT, our certified low vision therapist prescribe those optical aids, um, it'll, it'll have a separate number, catalog number where you can just purchase the, the reading material. So that is the plan for the Envision Kit. It is getting uh, revised currently. We are working to um, make this kit more streamlined and, and available to all ages. And Jim uh, appended to his note, I really like the option for a separate catalog number for the reading materials. Yeah, yeah, that was um, definitely recommended. So. We will be working on that. Okay, so we had a uh, recently released product called Going to the Playground. And this came out, I think, in June, sometime in June. This was released. And it's a free iOS app. And it comes with a QR code with those materials that you can put your phone on the QR code and it will take you directly to uh, the app to download. Um, it comes with five tactile and braille overlays, and it comes with a frame to hold those overlays in place on the iPad. Um, it comes with a one-page insert in print and braille that explains how to use, um, how to best use the overlays with the app. Um, it, Okay, so this product, this only works with a 7 point or 9.7 .7 inch iPad. So the materials will only work with that size of an iPad. Um, and the, the overlays are $29 and the app is, is free from the Apple store. Um, does anyone have any questions about this product? Um, this would be a great tool to use uh, for your students as a virtual playground. I know right now a lot of the playground equipment is not available. A lot of the swings and uh, playground equipment has been blocked off or removed. So um, this would be a great way to introduce the playground environment uh, to a young child using this app. It's a self-voicing app and uh, it comes with uh, five pages of the story and each page has a clear overlay with Braille on it. So it's a really good way to introduce Braille literacy skills so they can find um, where the heading would be on a page or where the page number would be located. And it has, um, it has a, a merry-go-round, a sandbox, and uh, monkey bars. So it's a fun, interactive app and would be a great 
way to get your students uh, to play virtually in a playground setting. Um, and then the last slide I have here is a product that's coming soon. So this product um, is gonna be one of um, a magnifier to add to our electronic uh, magnifier family. And it's called Juno. And it is gonna be a handheld video magnifier with OCR and touch. And it will be a seven inch matte LCD screen. It will have a touch screen and talking menus, but it'll also have some button functionality and it will have OCR. So it'll have the optical recognition. So you can uh, take a picture of text and have it read aloud. Um, it will have four gigabytes of storage. So you'll be able to store approximately um, 600 images on the device. You'll also be able to transfer files onto the device using a USB-C flash drive. And you'll be able to name your files using a voice tag. And the magnification level is 2x to 30x magnification. And it will have 24 high contrast color modes. And it will have uh, the adjustable line and mask feature. So a lot of the, the same features that are found in most handheld magnifiers, this will have in addition to having uh, the OCR capability. Um, it will have a camera that will rotate to five different reading positions. So you'll be able to have the near reading, the distance uh, viewing, who will have a hobby or you know, handwriting view and a self view as well. Um, so I'm very excited about Juno coming out. Um, does anyone have any questions about our recently released product or our new product coming out or any of the products I mentioned earlier? Uh, you knew this was coming. Do you know the possible estimated cost for Juno? Yes, so we're still trying to work out the, the price and I wouldn't want to tell you the price and then it'd be different. So we don't have the price exactly yet for you. Uh, comment regarding the website page for going to the playground overlays. Uh, maybe consider including 9.7 inch iPad only bullet on the main product page. It is in the features tab, but not everyone reads that, and it could be easy to order it and end up not having it fit the iPad. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I can definitely let them know to move that to the main description on that um, shopping page for sure. Absolutely. It, yeah, you'll need to know the size. <laughs> Okay, do we have any other questions? I have the, so you can see the frame. This is the going to the playground um, frame with the overlay in it. And the frame that comes with the product is a bright, it's a bright yellow color frame. And it just fits onto the iPad like this. And the frame has um, these, there we go. So it just fits on there like that. And the frame has the, the suction uh, tabs on the back. So it will stick down and stay flat on the iPad. And I was trying to bring up the, the app, but I have the developer app and it says it's expired. So 
I'll have to re-download it. Um, it's not letting me. Hold up. So, um, so yeah. Does anyone have any other questions about any of our low vision products? Fred, do we have anything else coming through? It is quiet on the chat. Um, people can, <laughs> can also uh, just unmute themselves since I don't think there's any danger of people getting unruly. Well, uh, I, I, I do have a question. Yes. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm in Texas. Uh, Obviously, last May, I mean, we historically have a pretty large low vision conference every May. Uh, two years ago, it had gotten to the point where it was going to have to be moved off campus at Texas School for the Blind because it we came really close to uh, breaking the fire code. But my question is, uh, it's most likely the way I'm looking at Texas and the landscape for next May. Now, the only reason I'm interested in this because it's my conference as far as the admin part and uh, the person that's in charge of it is very detail oriented and really likes to plan ahead. Would it be possible, especially if it's going to be virtual, which I've got a feeling it's going to be, uh, would you guys be willing to take part in that as far as APH products for low vision? That's my question. And I know it's really early, but uh, I'm sure we'd love to have some input. Sure. Um yeah, if you want to contact me, I can put my email in the chat. I think it was on the first slide. Well, it's way, this is way, way, way off. So, uh, I think, I think it'd be great. Yeah, I, I would definitely be, um, willing to, to get in touch with you and talk more about the conference and yeah, and definitely participate well i'll keep you in mind i i just we Here usually they usually try to have a different theme every year oh, on low vision and i know uh jim sullivan who's now an aph employee uh mm -hmm. is uh he's attended a few well exhibited and spoken at a few of ours those conferences and, and uh, the last conference we had before the virus back in February in Houston, uh, Greg Stilson was there with an APH display and uh, just made an unbelievably good impression on, on, we had hundreds of attendees at that and it, Okay, I just, I just yeah, have a. I, I put on. email in the chat for you. Thank you. Okay, that's all. I'll shut up. <laughs> okay, I think um, I think we only have about down to five minutes, Justine. Yeah, we got about five minutes. So, um, if anybody wants to see a product on our website or just type it in the chat um, or if you have any questions about anything I went over I know I went pretty quickly 
The closing code for this uh, session is side by side. That's S I D E hyphen by B Y hyphen S I D E. And that's also in the chat. Well, if there aren't any questions, we'll let you get an early start on your weekend. I hope everyone yeah. has a wonderful weekend, and it's been a pleasure having you here. Um, so if you need anything, feel free to re reach out to Justine or anyone here at APH, and we'll all be glad to help. Thank you again. Thank you.